you think about this, we are actually spiritual beings. We have a soul, which is our, our mind, our will, and emotions, and we live in a physical body. And so our existence on earth, we place so much emphasis on the physical elements, it's almost like the tail wagging the dog. And so the spirit just kind of gets put off to the side until we have conversations maybe like this, and then we might want to consider, you know, what's the nature of my spiritual being, when really it's the spirit that should be the head and the body is just the tail. You are listening to The Dr. Haley Show, the podcast dedicated to helping you optimize your health. Each episode, there will be an interview or a message to help you discover better health. We will be featuring health radicals on the show to bring new ideas to the table, as well as doubling down on key fundamentals to support you living your best life. Your host is no other than the founder of Haley Nutrition, Dr. Michael Haley. I'm Dr. Michael Haley, and this is the Dr. Haley Show podcast. Today's guest, Jude Sullivan, known as the fitness pastor. His current superpower is helping people get unstuck to realize the meaning and purpose of their lives. His mission is to connect people with God and then get out of the way. I like that. Jude, thank you for joining me on this show today. Thank you, Dr. Haley. I appreciate it. God Talks, that is the company you're currently associated with, right? Well, Ed Rush, who is the author of the book, God Talks, I'm one of his certified coaches. And so he's been a business leader for a number of years. And it kind of started innocently as a part of his business seminars. He would have this kind of offline group where he would invite people to come and see about how they can listen to God and how that could amplify their businesses. And it kind of evolved from that. And then he actually wrote a book. It was published. It came out last year. And so that's kind of where we're at right now. God is always trying to communicate to us. It's up to us to figure out a way to listen to it. Uh, But our life is so full of distractions that we believe that we can't. And that's sad. And so it's simply his initiative to help people realize that you can. (laughs) And so he provides a a methodology for that. You know, that's kind of why I wanted you on this show. I kind of knew this was your specialty, your area of expertise that you're really practicing right now. For me, I have a nutrition company and I'm going to explain how this has worked into my life when it comes to communicating with my customers. And then hopefully we'll make sense of it in learning from you on how God speaks to us. But a lot of people will ask me something so simple like, I make aloe vera, raw aloe vera, and people are drinking it to strengthen their immune systems against cancers and heal their bowels and stuff like that. And they'll ask me, how much should I drink? And sometimes I'll lead them through a little mental gymnastics and say, well, you should you know, have a gallon a day. Well, that seems like a lot. I was just kidding. You should have a teaspoon. That doesn't feel right. Well, what were you hoping I would say? Is there something that you were hoping I would say, like a, a full glass, a, a sip? Or what were you hoping for? What was the amount I was going to say that was going to make you feel just right? Because that might be your answer. You know, what if I deviated a little high from that? Well, it starts getting uncomfortable. What if I went a little low? It gets uncomfortable. See. I believe the answers are there. We just don't know how to listen to them. I can't give you the answer. I can say something to you, and there's going to be times when it just doesn't feel right. And maybe you should get a second opinion and find the right way. I don't know if that makes sense. But for me, there have been times in my life where it seems like God speaks to me, and it's very subtle. The question is, am I paying attention? And then there's other times when it's like, and this is the few and far between, it's more clear than surround sound, even though there's no sound waves, but you just know. What's your experience with that? How do you know when it's God? How do you know when it's you? Uh, I'm a Christian, so it comes from that perspective. So um, what's interesting is, 
you think about this, we are actually spiritual beings. We have a soul, which is our, our mind, our will, and emotions, and we live in a physical body. And so our existence on earth, we place so much emphasis on the physical elements, it's almost like the tail wagging the dog. And so the spirit just kind of gets put off to the side until we have conversations maybe like this, and then we might want to consider, you know, what's the nature of my spiritual being, when really it's the spirit that should be the head and the body is just the tail. And so to answer your question, we're so in our heads sometimes the Holy Spirit, when you ask the Spirit to live inside of you, it resonates with your own voice. And so it's not about of hearing maybe with your ears, although that could be possible. It's more of a quickening. That's the best way, I, the best word I can use to, to maybe describe it. This idea of like, you know, some people might call it a, an aha moment. But what I think what happens is that people will dismiss the obvious saying, oh, that can't be God. <laughs> And, but God's like wants to give you something simple for you to take that step in faith because he's not going to give you the whole plan. And I'm sure as you're, you know, in your own business, you don't have the whole plan. You might have a vision for where you want to go, but how those individual d- descriptive steps actually unfold, sometimes you don't know until it's actually placed in front of you. And then you have to take that step, not knowing what the next step is going to be. So what what tends to happen is that we actually, we hear God more than we realize, but we have this editor inside of us that says, oh no, it couldn't be that. And so we just have to actually step out in faith and then obey and just see what the next step is. And what I would say for people who are actually start to apply this is that internal feelings of tension and dissonance, they'll start to subside and there's a calm that comes from it. We have so much, like I said, distraction that's about us uh, that we we become anxious because we're not sure which is the way to go. (laughs) There's so many paths. Uh, You know, am I taking the right path? And it's really not about that. It's it's a willingness to actually settle down. The Bible says, be still and know that I'm God. And so this application of becoming still, especially in our society, is probably the biggest hurdle that we have to Okay. So this might sound like a foreign language to some people. So let's back up a little bit because you probably didn't always understand these things. There was probably something that happened in your life. Maybe along the way you came to open yourself up and allow God into your life, maybe. And these things probably became more apparent to you and you started realizing, okay, there is a God. Can you tell us about that and how that happened for you? Sure. So uh, I grew up in a Catholic family, and um, I'm very grateful uh, for my family and and the the faith that they brought into my life. I would say at a very young age, I was actually hearing from God, but I didn't comprehend what that was. And so I didn't know what to do with that. And I didn't really speak about it to anybody, but it wasn't, again, hearing with my my carnal ears, it was a sense of knowing, you know, when you're five years old, it's like that's a pretty heady thing. And you yourself, like I said, you don't really know what's happening with that. And so I, I grow and I mature and I'm active in my church and you do church things, but it's not about church anymore. It, it has to become more personal. It has to become a decision that you make. God doesn't want a relationship that's about religiosity or about tradition. He wants a personal relationship with you. That's the most important thing. Whatever is important in your life is important to him, probably more so than it is to you. But what even trumps that is that he wants to be in relationship with you. And so it took me a long time to to get to that point. You know, I was so caught up in the mechanics of religion, thinking that that was kind of the way to find this you know, sweet spot to live. And I had it all upside down. And so as I became an adult and actually became a parent and I was married, I went through a, a divorce. I went through the death of children. You know, you start getting, going through these real life seasons that we all have them. You know, it, mine is no more big than anybody else. We all have them. What happens when that situation hits you, the storm that hits you, And then what do you do with that? And so 
it, it does come back down to we can continue to let ourselves to be distracted. We become more distracted or we can settle in, but we don't want to do that because and sometimes it's painful for people and it was painful for me, but that's where God wants to, again, be in relationship with you to know that God, God is love. He doesn't give love. He is love and he, he wants to, to love you and he wants you to love him. <laughs> And it's, it's love him and then love everybody else. You know, that those are the most important things to him. And so it took me a long time to go through that process of just reading a scripture or hearing about that and talking about that to actually embracing that and have it be less about doing and more about being. And so I'm still on that path now where many behaviors or habits or the thoughts or things that I do that keep me from being because I think I should be doing, <laughs> I have to flip that around. And so that, yeah. that's a part of sanctification that lasts the, the rest of your life. And that, that's what I'll be going through. Are you enjoying the show thus far? One of the many health secrets that we have covered on the show is all around aloe vera, specifically drinking raw aloe vera. Our aloe vera has helped our customers effectively heal their gut, increase their intestine health, lower inflammation in the body, eliminate and or decrease acid reflux, have glowing skin and hair, and so much more. Now, as a frequent member of our audience, you will be exposed to exclusive specials and coupon codes for the awesome products manufactured by Haley Nutrition. That's right, for simply being awesome and tuning in, you can get a mini discount to help you optimize and better your health. To see how we can help and support you on your health journey, Tune into the episodes and listen for coupon codes that you can use at www.haleynutrition.com before you make your orders of raw aloe vera. Once again, it's www.haleynutrition.com. Now, back to the show. So, yeah, there's a, a process that takes the rest of our lives, and we may never come to that moment of completion, but was there a moment in time, a significant turning point where you said, you know, I surrender? And that that's a great question, because I think some people, they think, well, if I didn't have that, then it, it's then I'm, I haven't gotten there. And I don't agree with that. You know, I don't think there is a moment in time. I think there can be moments in time that you recognize, but I can't give you a day with the actual hour that this happened. I said, Oh, okay. There it is. I can say, you know, when I was in the Catholic church, when I became, when I was confirmed, I feel like that, that was, that was a moment in time for me. So I, I could identify that as a time. Mm -hmm. I can also say when one of my children passed away, that was also a moment in time for me. Mm -hmm. I could say when I, I was remarried, that was another moment in time for me. So there's, there are these moments that I string together where it's kind of like if you've ever seen that poem, Footprints in the Sand, you know, and there's there's two footprints and then all of a sudden there's one and it's like the, the person's asking, you know, rhetorically, but, you know, God's listening. He's like, why weren't with you with me? He's like, well, those aren't your footprints. Those are mine. That's when I was carrying you in the midst of that. Yeah. And so, again, I think what happens is, and it, this can be a real slippery slope, is we we defer so much to our emotions and that we think it should be an emotional thing that connects me to what God is about. That if we don't have the emotional, whatever it is that we think we should have, that we become disappointed <laughs> by that and think, well, it's, he doesn't want to be in relationship with me. And you cannot good or bad. You cannot put that much stock in your emotional response to validate the fact that God is real and God wants to be in relation. I agree. When you talk about emotion too, and think of the word love. Right. And we talk about God's unconditional love and our love for God. It doesn't always mean that love is emotional. Sometimes we feel distant and sometimes it's more of a choice. Uh, love has been defined as charity which is more action than feeling. So I think it's easy as we 
go through our journey to fall into the trap and think, well, I don't feel this right now. Well, it's not always that way. When it comes to, well, my listeners, some of them are going through the path, trying to hear God. They're on the right path. Other are at a complete change in their life. Maybe their marriage has just ended. Maybe they were terminated from their job. Maybe their skills aren't even relevant anymore as the world is changing. I think of a friend of mine who does, well, did medical transcription. Well, that's been replaced by AI. His whole business is pretty much you know, expired. There's no reason for it anymore. So people are along on, on the path. They know they're on the right path, but they aren't quite being directed by God. And other people are completely at a place where they're saying, I don't even know what God's will is for my life. What advice would you have for those two extremes? Yeah, th those are really good and really relevant questions. Um, I don't know if I have the best answer, but here, here's what I'll do. I'll give it a shot. It's a and tough what I one. Say, what I want to say before you, I go into that is what I loved what you said, Dr. Haley, about love is we attach so much emotion to it. Is that, again, this idea that it, it, there has to be a feeling associated with love for it to be love. That, that's really not what it's about. And what you said about charity and just the, the act of being selfless um, is a very difficult thing because we're not supposed to love people who love us. We're supposed to love our enemies. <laughs> And that doesn't feel very loving. So I just want to thank you for that. that. That was really awesome. So to answer your question, I think the single most important thing that we could ask God is what is our purpose for our life? Because things do change. Things uh, are like the, the shifting sand. And if we put our faith in things that are like shifting sand, it's going to be a really rough life. And the idea of what is success you know, if I put it as, you know, having a successful business or being a successful employee within a business that all of a sudden you're sacrificed um, because of layoffs, you know, it's not even a, an industry thing, but it's just a financial thing. All of a sudden you're looked at as just a number that that can be very invalidating uh, to who you are as a person. And so I, I can relate to some of this because I feel like, you know, I I was trained as a clinical exercise physiologist. I worked in corporate healthcare, but the one thing I couldn't really speak about that was what I felt was the most important was the faith element. But in integrative health, there was this desire to bring other elements of spiritualism into to the mix. And so for me, it, it felt very contradictory. And so what happened for me and maybe this is the best way to explain it for somebody to address your question is somebody came up to me when I was running one of our research programs and she said, and this is how I got the name, the fitness pastor. She goes, Jude, you just remind me of being a fitness pastor. And it was kind of one of those times where it felt like it was who God wanted me to be was aligned with what it is that I was doing. And what that I can further translate that out into the future is it didn't matter what I was doing because people could see that there was God in the middle of that, even though I couldn't profess it, you know, verbally or out loud to somebody. So I'd say the most important thing is to uh, first seek God. You know, I think many times we decide what it is that we want to do and then we ask God, OK, give me the blessings because I, I really feel like my aptitude is here and this is what I should be doing. But we didn't really ask God first. And so that can be hard if you're in the midlife. You know, I'm going to be 60 tomorrow, actually. And so I'm kind of reinventing myself right now, even, you know, to be an entrepreneur, to go from an employee into an entrepreneur space, there's take some reinvention. I'm sure you're very well aware of that, too. So it's not about what you do to be the foundation of who you are. It's who you are. And then how is that expressed and what it is that you do? And God is always ha has provision for it. So if we're really in tune with what it is that he's telling us, he will show you what it is that that's going to be the next step for you to take to go through what it is that he wants, which represents the purpose that he has for you in your life. 
I, I'm going to ask you to re-say that because I think it was a great point. And it was something along the lines of it's not what you're doing that makes who you are. It's who you are doing what you do. How, how'd you say that? Yeah. So what, and this is kind of another one of those points, you know, goes back to your initial question where it felt like once that woman said to me, you remind me of being a fitness pastor to me, it, in, it felt like I was integrating who it is I was with what it is I was doing. And what it told me is, is that it didn't matter what I was doing. I could do anything because I didn't even have to say to somebody what my faith was because they experienced that through what was coming out of me. So it doesn't matter, you know, am I an entrepreneur? Am I an employee? Am I just a retired guy? Whatever. It doesn't matter. People should, they should experience that from me no matter what it is that I'm doing. God will help you take care of the doing. He brought, he gives you the provision to what it, to do what it is that you need to do, but we need to sit back and listen and get rid of the distractions so we know what it is that he wants us to do so that we can fulfill the purpose that we have in our lives. I think there's a scripture verse, something to the effect of we are to be the fragrance of Christ. And we don't have to be known by our, you know, bumper stickers and our t-shirts that says, you know, I love Jesus, but they should see the love that we have in the things that we do. We are to be the fragrance of Christ, some to salvation. And unfortunately for others, it might be for their own damnation as they reject, you know, everything uh, about Jesus, everything about God. But our job is to be representatives of who he is to the best of our ability. And continue to improve along the way. At the beginning, you said something about continuing to along the path, you know, never quite achieving in our life, but being transformed continually. That's right. Yep. We're a work in progress. <laughs> a work in progress, for sure. What are some business gems that you've learned along the way? One challenge that business owners will experience are possibly negative reviews or complaints, people, customers, angry customers, people that are disgruntled, don't like the way something was handled either by you or by someone in your company. What yeah. advice would you have for the, for those people? Yeah. So the, the one thing I would say again, is you deepen in your faith too, is that you become unoffendable. And so when you get messages like that, you, you don't respond to them in emotional reactivity, but you, you look for the grain of truth that might be in there that could actually serve you and, and help you in this process of, of growing in whatever it is that you do. So I think many times if it's, you know, we could have a Michelangelo sculpture, but we see the one imperfection. Everybody else sees the beauty, but you see the perfection. Often we're our own worst critics. And sometimes we can let that hold us back. But when you hear that criticism from somebody else, and it could be the, just the one out of 10, you take that to heart and you, you make that something bigger than what it really is. If you, again, I just go back to what it is that we were talking about before. If you really rooted your foundation in what it is that God has set before you, you can expect retaliation. <laughs> and so it's not, it's not going to come as a surprise. You know, it could be legitimate. It could also be illegitimate. And to go back to your concept about love, it's like I need to continue to love that person and pray for the best for them in spite of the attack or the ridicule. But like I said, if I'm not offended, there might be some real good information in there that I can use to make what it is that I'm doing even better. And so if we have the armor of God on, <laughs> like, okay, bring it on. You know, mm -hmm. I, there's, not a, there's not a hero uh, in the faith that has not been ridiculed or attacked or denigrated unjustly. And so we are to expect uh, that to happen. Persecution is a reality. You know, for a yeah, when it comes to uh, reviews, business reviews, I'm probably one of the few people that everyone gets an email when you purchase from us if you're opted in, autoresponders. They ask for Google reviews, among other things, the good and the bad. I want to know the uh, thank you for telling the truth, right. whether it's uncomfortable for me or makes me feel great. I want people that are looking into me to know what they can expect on both sides of the equation. 
And hopefully when those negative reviews come in, hopefully I'll look at them and do what you just said. I'll say, well, what can I learn from this? Is there any truth in it? Because if there is, there's truth that is causing someone to create a negative review, I need to address it. I need to look at my life and say, how can I change that? So that review could be a mirror for me looking in the mirror saying, what do I need to fix? And I think what it speaks to the customer, if if it's it's not just a somebody whining, but they're giving you legitimate feedback and you respond to it authentically, you actually gain trust because they you took them seriously, you know, and, you know, I'm not for somebody who's whining or complaining without providing a solution. I think, you know, we're obligated if we see a, a problem that to maybe offer a possible solution. It doesn't mean you have to take it and do it, but at least they're giving you, you know, good feedback. But for me as the business owner, I want them to trust me, even if we have a disagreement, you know, because I, I want you as a customer. You know, I don't just see you as a, a number. I see you as a valuable person and I want to do my best for you. And if I failed in doing my best for you, this is my opportunity to, to make that different. Yeah. On the flip side of that, a lot of businesses have the policy that the customer is always right. I don't have that policy right. <laughs> because sometimes they're not. Right. And I, I, I love my good customers, but I'm going to take care of my employees first. And if somebody is taking away from, you know, my company, from my people, and they're hurting them and wearing them down with negativity, I'm sorry, you're not going to be my customer because they do come first. If they weren't worthy of coming first, they wouldn't be here anyway. <laughs> That's right. Exactly so, right. But it, it's interesting. Yeah. What can I learn from that? I do want the negativity. But if there's nothing to learn from it and it, it's just who you are, you know, negative and, and angry, well, I, I, I don't really have room for that. I'll try to help you, but it can't be my life mission. What about time management? Do you have a task list, things that you're going to attack today? I do. And so the I would say the one thing about being the entrepreneur that has been kind of a two-edged sword is that I like organization. Um, but I also like getting things done. And so if the to-do list is too big, it never gets done. And so you can get lost in a cycle of um, feeling defeated because the list is always there. And the fact of the matter is that the list will always be there. <laughs> so you have to learn how to prioritize you know, what is um, most needed and what, what needs to be done today. And so... Uh, it's Dr. Haley interrupting this podcast to give you a site-wide coupon code for use at HaleyNutrition.com. You can even use it on our frozen aloe vera, and we hardly ever do that, especially when we're running out. Our freezer is almost empty, but we're working hard to convince our farmer to get out in the field for another harvest. You can say this coupon is a little bit of a faith move. So head over to HaleyNutrition.com and use the coupon code FAITH, F-A-I-T-H, for a 7% discount off your entire purchase. The code will work throughout the month of June of 2024. Now, back to the Dr. Haley Show podcast. What's interesting for us is in addition to the coaching that we do, or I do, we have businesses in real estate, especially with um, Airbnb. and that speaks to kind of your customer review thing because we're very attuned to that. But so we have to manage our time so that I can address time that I need to spend with my clients and give them the time that they deserve and what they paid for. But I also have to attend to our customers that are get our guests uh, either living in our you know, properties or about to come in or they will review us afterwards. And we have to respond to that as well. And so I'm not saying it's perfect. You know, there's many times where the, the waves will crash into one another and you're just like, okay, which one do I do first? But I would say for me, I it the time management thing especially is something that I pay attention to because I think time is our most valuable commodity. I need to give time not just to my business, but I 
we have six kids. We have five grandkids right now. And we have set up our life so that we can be available to them. And so we want to be able to do that as well. And so that that's very important to us, you know, how we manage those things as well. So it's not just a matter of, you know, having the best business possible, although that's what is important to us, but we really want to be invested in in giving time, especially to our family. You know, we're like we're dog watching, we're grandkid watching, we're putting time in with our kids. So it can be very demanding, but that's what we're committed to. So time management is a big one for me, but I, I like that. That That's a challenge that I'm willing to, to dive into. Yeah, sometimes I'll look at my list and it is too long. And I might take the debt snowball approach where, you know, in a debt snowball, yeah. you pay off the yeah. smallest debts first, regardless of their in- interest rate, just to narrow down the list, just to make Get things yeah. easier. So a lot of times it's like, okay, you know, I can bang out five of these tasks and maybe the next 10 minutes. Let me just to make my list more manageable. And, and, and you knock those out sometimes before getting to the other ones that are even more important, just to make it less overwhelming. I don't know. It works for me. What's I like favorite? that approach a lot. That that makes oh, yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite book on the subject of success, hearing God, following his plan for your life? Yeah. Well, for hearing God, it's God talks. <laughs> so th- there's no doubt about that. You know, I a book that I've really come to appreciate a lot is Atomic Habits by James Clear. And so it's this idea of, you know, if you can take a concept and and drill it down to its, you know, this, not even the smallest common denominator, but if it's a behavior change, especially is like, what is the one thing that I can do? And then how can I grease the skids supposedly to get myself moving in that direction, then provide enough of friction to keep me from relapsing or reverting back. I just thought that that, that book was really well written. I like the, the, the commentary on the, um, the examples that he provides. Uh, I think it's a, a really smart way to address problem solving, to address behavior change. Um, and so I, I go back to that book, you know, from a secular perspective and a business perspective and really a life perspective. Um, so God Talks and Atomic Habits, they're easy reads as well. You know, you don't, <laughs> you don't have to read hard for comprehension. And there's things that I think are really applicable right away. It's not like you have to, to work hard to find something that you can actually try and do um, from the moment you start reading. Jude, I think some of my audience is going to be hearing you answer that question and they're going to be saying, God, is that you? Because in the last four or five recorded podcasts, you're the third guest to mention that book, Atomic Habits. The first one was Sean Spire. He's a fitness trainer. And for him, he talked about Atomic Habits and how it made him a reader. He wanted to be a reader. And here's the funny thing. He said, I didn't, I didn't get the book. I got the audio version because I wasn't a reader. But it talked about two minutes a day to create this habit. So I committed to reading two minutes a day. And now I'm a reader. Well, that was just a few weeks back. And then someone else on a more recent podcast had mentioned that same book, and now you are. So I will definitely have a link to that book and to the book God Talks below this podcast to make it easy for people to click through and get those. What would you say your favorite uh, testimonial is to what you do, possibly helping someone in business or hear the voice of God or follow the path that he has for them? You mean as it relates to one of my clients? Well, whether it's one of your clients or anyone that you know through God Talks, however. Right. Uh, So there's a a gentleman that Ed is working with who he has no digital or um, what's the word I'm looking for? He, He has no experience in the app industry. He came from construction. But he was given a download from God and it was kind of one of those things like, really? (laughs) 
And he developed this app, um, which they're now putting into the marketplace, which I think might be picked up by Home Depot. And so it it went from he was very successful in the business that he was working in in construction, but this is totally mushroomed into something that that's totally different because it it answers a lot of problems that people experience as consumers. You know, when they're trying to find something that they could go to Home Depot to find, and so this app provides a bridge um, between the consumer having a problem and finding a solution in the Home Depot store. So from a big business perspective, that's, that's one of the, the bigger things, you know, I've had, you know, more subtle things, kind of like what you said about, you know, something like us talking about atomic habits, you know, that I don't think those are, God is not into coincidences. You know, if it came more than once, you know, you got to think, you know, God is probably trying to bring something to me and maybe I better just stop and just ask God, you know, is, is it about this or is there something, because sometimes we'll get pictures and like, what was that about? And so, you know, God is, he's, it's, he's like a, a playful father. You know, he'll, he'll say, okay, come on. I'm going to, I'm going to show you this. Are you interested in this? No, come on, take one more step. So he just keeps beckoning us. He keeps calling us closer. And so things like, like you just said about, you know, atomic habits, I defer your listeners. Um, don't dismiss that. You know, it's fun. You know, it should be fun. It should be easy and light. You know, even if there's, you know, a mess around you, you know, God's relationship should bring joy. We should feel joy inside. And so the storms can be around us and they can impact us and affect us totally. And that's real. You know, so we're not denying, we're not living in denial, but we can still live with joy in our hearts and we can still live to love the, the people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a scripture that says, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. Does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. That's from Jeremiah. And I believe, you know, having that connection and that confidence in God, he is in your life. He loves you. He is directing your path. You know, all we have to do is listen and follow. In the case of the Home Depot example, you mentioned the man was in construction and found a problem probably through that experience in his profession in construction and said, there could be something to make this better. And he, he, he followed that path paid attention. Is there something there? I think that's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. How can people get in touch with you? Do you have an email list? Do you have a social media where people should follow you, a website they should check out? I, I don't have a website currently. I, I am on social media. You know, if they if they want to reach out to me directly, um, my email is thefitnesspastor44 at gmail.com. Uh, so they can reach out to me there. You know, if you want for your audience, maybe we can sweeten the pot a little bit. So for those who reach out to me, I'm not sure when you're going to post this. Um, but once we decide on what the dates are with that, uh, I can just uh, see who uh, reaches out and I can do a drawing. And whoever wins that drawing, I'll send them a free copy of the God Talks book. To them awesome. I like that. And let's know a little bit more about the services that you offer. Yeah. So God talks again, it, literally like what you said in the intro and what I try to portray for myself is my, my role. I like to tell people is like, do you want to be, you know, connected to the best coach in any universe? Well, the coach isn't me, <laughs> the coach is God, but I like to think that I'm the guide that helped create the introduction or reintroduce you to that coach. So my, my job is to, to get you guys introduced and to get out of the way. So for me, I work with individuals who are, you know, it doesn't matter. It, we're talk, been talking business, but it doesn't have to be all business. It could be just this idea, like what you said, of what is, what am I supposed to do in life? What's my purpose? That could be something. Or, or maybe it's about relationships, whether it's a relationship that's already existing or one that you're seeking. You know, and how is God wanting to, you know, answer that with you? So, 
I help a lot of individuals that way. I do help teams and organizations who um, maybe haven't thought about running their business this way, but are actually maybe open to considering the idea of uh, bringing God into the mix and if not working with the CEO, being the CEO <laughs> and uh, actually relegating some time to, you know, having conversations that are meaningful and bringing God into the midst of that as well. So uh, do focus group work as well amongst different companies. And so it's kind of a growing piece of work for me right now. Is there anything you wish I had asked or content that you think the audience would benefit from? Yeah, I love that question. So thank you for that. <laughs> What I don't really have something that I wish you would ask. I I'm just glad that you're asking these questions. And so for me, it's God is on the move right now. And for people like you, Dr. Haley, that are willing to have these conversations and to open these conversations up so that they're not taboo and that we can make them, you know, a public conversation. I just want to thank you for that because I think we need more of that. I think too often, especially Christians, uh, we've, this idea of love has been equated to tolerance and you know th- those aren't the same thing. And we have to speak out, but we speak out in love. And so I'm glad that you're doing this and you're speaking out in love and you're allowing these conversations. So thank you. it's less about me wanting to, you to ask a question. I, I'm just glad and I just want to encourage you to, to keep doing this and I really appreciate Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. For the audience, there will be links below the content, below the YouTube video, on the blog page. And you have Jude's email address. Uh, Feel free to ask questions. Use the comment section. I'll get back to you. And if there's something I can't answer, I'll ask Jude to get back to that particular question. Thank you so much, Jude. Thank you so much for joining me. This was a uh, great learning opportunity. I hope you enjoyed that episode today on the Dr. Haley Show. Make sure to hit subscribe on whichever platform you are listening to this. If this episode made you think of someone, go ahead, take a screenshot, and share this exact episode with them. You can catch the show notes for this episode on www.drhaley.com. If you want to geek out with Dr. Michael Haley on other radical health topics, Be sure to check out his YouTube channel, where he posts exclusive video content. All the details are at www.drhaley.com, and we can't wait to hang out with you on the next episode.